Hi everyone, Kathy Beltran with Wings and Whispers. Welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we are going to be working on step two, shaping and molding our cardboard angel wings. We will be working on the base layer, the largest layer, and we will, by now you should actually have all your pieces cut out, if not at least your base layer. You will have three pieces to this. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is have your exacto knife ready. And you will be cutting slits every half inch to one inch, about an inch, and cutting these slits all the way around until you get to the top here. And as you start to get here, you're going to want to cut the slits to, um, you'll start at one inch. You'll get down to three quarters of an inch, half an inch to a quarter. And so you'll stop about right here. And so you'll continue along all the way to this side. And this is actually going to help with two things. It's going to help you mold and shape. And later on, when we get to the sculpting of the neck and arches. So you're gonna want all of your layers your big layers, your medium layers, and your smaller layers, so three, all having these cuts. So definitely get that ready. So what we will do is we're going to be using our, our blessed water. And this room is gonna to start to smell fantastic. So we're going to grab one of the sheets. I have, for the sake of the video, I've already completed the entire thing here. Um, but I will show you what we're going to do with each of the three pieces to this bottom layer. So you're going to want to saturate it. Make sure it's saturated. Kind of wipe that in. You will flip it around and do the side, other side as well. Enough, I've actually got it pretty wet in there. So with each of the layers, you're going to want to smash the tips about the size of your thumb. Smash them together. So all the way around. And then you'll flip it back to the right side. So a little tip here, you have three pieces of the same size. You're gonna to want to pick. Now, if you're working with brand new cardboard, you're probably not gonna have a problem. You're not gonna have all these gouges or cut lines or working on folds. Um, it really depends on how you, you transfer it to the cardboard. So you're gonna to wanna to pick your best top piece where you won't have to do so many fixes later on. So, um, and, and if you want, on this one in particular, I have already outlined each of the feathers. So, the, the, the worst piece you have if you're working with old cardboard, put it in the middle of the sculpted piece. And the bottom piece, you know, it's fine. So you're going to see that bottom piece on the back, and we will uh, address what we can do with it if it, it's, it's got gouges or anything like that. So right now, I have the front piece. So I will now, all these little slits, I'll just kind of push them forward all the way around. And I'm really just trying to manipulate and work this cardboard. So the next thing I will do is I will take my ruler, stick, whatever you have. Um, you could use a small one depending on your layers. And between the line, between the feathers, fold them and move your, your stick as you're going around. So you really want to make sure you fold it. Enough, I pretty much folded this one before we got here, but I'm going to do it one more time. So my cardboard is actually pretty saturated. And right now you'll see it's already doing a curve. Um, so at that point, I will start running my shaping tools. And I will pick 
one of the larger needles. And again, you could use one of these, just a larger size. You could use a two liter soda bottle. Make sure it's full though. And, or you could use, again, one of the big ones. It depends really on the size of the wings, how much height you want. So what I typically do is I'll go through this and I'll just shape it. I'll keep going around because I really want to work this hard for it so it'll become more pliable for me. And I'll keep turning each piece, each, each feather. So, I have worked it, now what kind of flat. So now, what I wanna do is I want to get my tips, I wanna fold them. And you can even just do this if you wanted to. You're just really smashing everything. Because what you're gonna end up having is three layers of this, and it's going to determine your height on your finished, your finished sculpture. So, you know, I'll even do this. Everything's starting to slide here. Don't forget your waterproof surface. So, now I want height here. I want it to be higher. So what I've done is I've actually cut, I have a bunch of different sizes of these and I cut them in half and then I further have them. So I want to bring more height. I might put another one on here and do that. Okay. So for now, I'll take this one out. I will take two other pieces, similar in size, or at least diameter, and start to do my shaping. And if you ever need to add more water, you know, if you notice things starting to dry out, then I would just squirt some more water and then push it around. So I would probably end up taking one of my three pound little medicine balls. And I will want to kind of make, right here in the center of the wing, I will want to kind of round it out. So what I will also do is I have the different sizes. You could use bowls if you had like cereal bowls, plastic bowls, ceramic bowls, whatever type bowls you want. But you want to give this area a little resting spot to be able to keep the shape of this in the center of each side of the wing. At this point, I will keep doing this, and depending on your work surface, things will start to slide around and you'll constantly do adjustments. But just remember that when you're done and you're happy with your shaping, and you leave it in this position to dry, and sometimes with three layers, it's gonna take 24 hours, and you want it to be in a, in a warmer area. So if your garage is really cold, it's definitely gonna take much longer. Um, definitely a couple of days, and you might have to take some of these weights off to let, allow those areas to dry. So I might add even more height here grab some of my, uh, my smaller pieces that I didn't cut in half and I will definitely pay attention to the folds here because I want there to be a curve on at least the larger feathers. Keep in mind there's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe nine feathers here that you don't want to just drop straight down or be bent. So keep in mind where you put your shaping tools. So, now this would be just layer one. And you always want to be careful of your center line, keeping that main center piece straight. So what I would typically do after this is, have a lot of these on the floor somewhere or on another table and I would just move it and place it there. 
And then I would grab my second piece, saturate it, fold it, make sure everything was cut out and kind of do a basic shape like this as well. I would take that second piece and lay it right on top of this one and get everything situated because I want that shape to dry. Up here, you'll notice it's starting to pinch a little bit. I would just keep moving things, moving the, the, the pool noodles until I wanted that, um, that exact shape. And so if you have to bend the cardboard, maybe two inches below that forward, that will actually help as well. So you would do this for all three pieces. So at this point, I'm going to pause and move everything over so you can see what I'm talking about. Make sure they are bent the way you want because they are going to absolutely dry in this position. So what I would typically do, um, typically I work in a very large area and I can just push this whole thing over, do the next layer, push it back, and then keep adding. Um, so you would want to keep this in this position. If you needed to move it, then you would have to just kind of work it again and get all these things propped up. Leave it to dry. If you can do it for, you know, um, if you want to start immediately on the next layer, you can do that too, but you would just have to keep going. The water, all the shaping, every step that I just showed you. Um, for this sake of this video, we are done. And I will continue on with step part two of step two. I don't want to confuse myself here. So again, let this dry or immediately start to go into your next layers. And so there'll be tips on when you get to the middle layers and the top layer. So I will see you at the, in the next episode. Have a great day, guys. Happy shaping and molding.